This video is a direct continuation of the two previous ones. I mention this because if you just stumbled upon this particular video, be sure to check the previous ones. Otherwise, you'd be lacking the context. This application is about creating a REST API for technical events. So we have our event collection, which contains two events, and then we are we have just one route, the path with the handler to display a particular event. So in the previous videos, I introduced a lot of concepts and we haven't really finished anything. We haven't closed uh, the gap. And today I would like to connect most of the dots we uh, put on the paper in previous videos. So let's start by addressing the elephant in the room, which is TypeScript. This video is about creating REST APIs in Node, but using TypeScript. And we haven't really used types. And once we used, we used uh, any, which is not a good practice. So let's change that. So our first type would be an interface called event. So this construct, this mechanism, allow us to define the shape of our event objects. So when we look at this collection, we see that those objects are the same. They have the same set of fields. And we can enforce that constraint by creating an interface in TypeScript. So we can say that event, each event should have an ID, which is of type uh, number. It should have name, which is string, and location, which is also string. And on top of that, we can say that once we create an instance or once we create an object of this type, uh, we cannot change the ID. We will add this read-only keyword to provide this intention to the reader and to the compiler as well, that the ID once set cannot be changed. And for the other two, it's different because we want to, uh, for example, we may need to update name or we may update the location or any other field that will be introduced afterwards. Once we have that, we can now say that event collection is actually an array of events and it works. And if I, for example, do something of that sort, which is specifying the ID as a string, you will see that it says that you cannot assign string to number. The constraint is there. The, the uh, compiler is checking now if we are constructing those objects the way we uh, define them using this shape. We can also now define the type for our repository. So I introduced this um, thing, this abstraction, event repository. If you're coming from C Sharp, it's something similar to the repository pattern, but it's more about providing this place in our code where we can send or delegate certain things related to storing or persisting our objects. Eventually, we will get rid of that. But for now, it's just a way to you know, put it into one place. So instead of using the const, we can, we will be using a class, which will be called event repository. And this class will have five methods, static methods. So if you are coming from Rails, this may look familiar. So the first methods we will do will be static methods called a fetch. And we will be providing the ID. We will grab this part over here and we will be returning that uh, particular object. So that's the first method. So now here in our get route, we can just say const event, event repository fetch and params ID. And then we can just return the event. So let's see if it works. I will be getting the event number one, event number two, it works. Again, notice that I didn't have to restart the server or adjust it. Everything works behind the scenes. So you, you can just focus on writing the code you need, your business logic, instead of like configuring it again and, and adapting and fix when, when something breaks, etc. When I said we want to connect the dots, let's introduce all the methods we need to uh, provide the full uh, crude interface. So we want to have a method for creating, for updating, for retrieving and for uh, deleting our objects, our event objects. 
So let's go ahead and add another one. So we retrieve a collection, the whole collection. So it will be without the ID and we don't need any parameters because we just want all what well, the storage, in our case, in the memory. So let's call it collection and let's use repository again. And let's call this method browse. So we want to browse the repository and just get all we, we uh, browsed. And then we want to just return it. So the, the browse doesn't exist yet. So let's create this method. I will create it here at the top. Browse, no parameters are needed because we want all. And we will just return the collection as it is. So let's see if it works. It works. I got the, an array of two entities. Okay, so that's good. So now it'd be good to add something to this collection. So we need a post and let's create a path. Let's call it event without a parameter because we are creating, appending a new object to the existing collection. So we don't need any IDs, but we need parameters because we need to provide the two fields that we want to add for this new event, which is the name and the location, because ID should be assigned automatically. So we need to params extracted from the request, which is the first parameter over here. And here again, I just a reminder, I'm using the, the structuring assignment. So I'm getting params out of request. So let's get the name and location from params. Let's append this new event to our collection using again the repository we created. So we will have a method create and we will just pass name and location. So this is not perfect. This should be improved and maybe we will improve it in the future. But for now, it's, it's good enough. So let's create this method in our event repository. So this will again be a static method, which will be taking the name of the event and location of the event. So here we will just create event with the ID, which will be current ID, which doesn't exist yet. So we will create a static field, which will be incremented each time a new event is being added to the collection. So this is like a poor man um, primary key in that databases. And for the rest, name and location. And now I just need to take the collection we have. And because it's just a simple JavaScript array, I can just push at the end this event. And I will return it to the handler. So that, so here, let's return. And instead of doing OK HTTP response, we will do create it, which is a convention in HTTP to say that a new resource has been created on the server. And we will pass the event. So we haven't imported that, so create it. First, let's check if we have all the events. So we have two events. So now let's do a um, post 5544 event and let's say name. For example, carry on and the location will be wrong. So we got a wrong ID because it must be uh, free here. Again, that's just a, you know, a workaround. Let's, because the server restarted, again, I have the initial collection, the one we defined here, even was discarded when we restarted it. So let's do the post again. Now it's free. Let's do the get for all events again. And the event is here. So it works. Notice that when I create a new event, so for example, Holly JS location uh, Moscow, I'm getting here HTTP 201, which is created. It's not the OK response, it's the created response because we are using the created helper here instead of OK. So now we have, so let's quickly do the two other ones, the U letter from the crude and the D letter. So updating and deleting. So deleting is simple. So let's start with that. So we have delete and the route is very similar to getting a one event because we want to identify which event we want to delete. So we will be doing that by ID. So we need params because this ID will be available through the params variable over here, we can just uh, now do event 
repository uh, destroy because we cannot use delete in JavaScript because it's a restricted word. Let's pass ID that and let's return OK without anything. So we don't have this method yet. So let's quickly add it static destroy ID string. In order to do it in the, the most simple way, let's just change this event collection from a constant to a variable Use ch by changing const to let. So we can reassign it. And let's do this trick that we will do event collection is event collection where we, we will filter out just one element and leave the rest as it is, which means that we will just remove one element and assign it again to the event collection. So we will filter, we will have element as first, and then we will do element ID. We need to cast it to string because remember that the in interface, it's number. And here we are getting it from the through HTTP, so it's string. So we, we are casting it. So it, let's say we want to remove everything. We don't need to return anything. Okay, so let's see if it works. So the server restarted automatically behind the scenes. So when I get all events, so I have again, just two elements, two events in my, in my list. So let's reuse some, some of the queries we did. So, and let's now delete the ID number two. So we will do HTTP delete. 5544 event with the ID 2. So we get an error because we have to make it like that. params ID. So let's again do uh, all. So we still have two ele elements because the server restarted. Let's add one. Let's check. We have three. And let's delete the one with two. So it's okay. And let's check all events. So now we have two elements, ID1 and ID3. So it works. So finally, we need a way to update. And this is a bit tricky. So I won't be discussing this in a, in a comprehensive way. We will just uh, get a glimpse how we can achieve that. If you're interested how to do it in a more general way, let me know. And I will need to record, I think, a whole episode about that because there's a lot of things. But for now, we, we will be only updating the name. Interface, this API, will provide us with a way to only update the name of, uh, of an event. So again, we need to know which event is considered to be uh, updated. We need to have params because we need to fetch somehow the ID which is passed as a part of the of the path of the URL. And now let's uh, do event. Again, even repository update ID and name. So let's, last time I made a mistake here. So let's do a trick, like another trick. So when we are using the, the structuring assignment, we can use it for the objects inside as well. So here in the put, we know that we are expecting the ID as a, par as a part of the parameters. And we also expect the name because this is the field we want to update. We can go deeper into this object and we can say that we want to extract ID and name from the params. So first we are extracting params from the request, which is the first parameter of this handler, always. And then from the params, which is part of the request, we are extracting ID and name. ID being here, as a part of the URL and name, this is something we expect for this API to receive. And now the error disappeared. We just need to create our update method. So let's quickly do that. So again, static update ID and name, because we want to only update the name. So now we need to first find the object we want to update. So we will just get it by ID. Let's and let's assign the name to it and let's return it so that here in the put we can now return OK and we can return the event so that the end user will know if the event updated or not. So again, server restarted. So if I query all events, it's us at the beginning. And here I see that strange loop is written with a mistake. It, there should be a space between strange and loop. So let's update that. I will be using put 5544 
event with the ID two and name should be strange loop. And now the record is returned. And let's see if if we query for all events, it's also the change is also included. So it works as expected. Oh, it's, it's done. We created all crude operations for our event resource. And let's just do tiny things to make it even better. So the first thing I would like to improve in this code is that whenever I am querying for an event which doesn't exist, it returns OK, which is wrong. It should return not found because 4 is not in the list. So that's a quick change. So let's go back here and let's ask if there is an event. If there is one, return it. Otherwise, if it's undefined, return not found. And this not found must be also included like so. If I query again for, I'm getting 404 not found. So perfect. I don't like this by ID with any and any. You should always try to eliminate any any's <laughs> in your TypeScript. So the first one is obvious. Current is always event. And the second one is the normalized structure in progress. So it's a string ID being mapped to event. So let's create another interface for that. And let's call it event by ID because it's simply a hash, an object where the key is the ID and the value is the, the whole event. And here we will use this trick. The keys are dynamic. So we will use square brackets and we will say ID string because we know that each of those dynamic keys is a string, is mapped to an event. And now we can say that stored is event but by ID. So we need to uh, cast it to string as well. And now everything should be OK. So there you have it. We created all the crude operations for browsing, retrieving, creating, updating and deleting our event resource. But it's somehow uh, tedious to write all that. So there is a lot of boilerplate. Uh, if you're about to create other resources, for example, for users, for books or anything you can imagine, those methods, those handlers, the route, those routes will be somehow similar. This is what we call a boilerplate. It repeats the same approach, repeats and repeats and repeats. And it'd be nice to eliminate that and to focus on what changes or what's, what matters in your code. And luckily, Hoons would provide a way to make it slightly more arranged. And I will talk about it in the next, I think, final episode of this tiny series. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching and see you next time.